Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to take a look at the new multi midi clip editing in Ableton Live 10. So this feature, something that people have been asking for for quite a long time, just to show you how this works in arrangement view, what we can essentially now do is whether it's on the same track or it's on multiple tracks, as long as it's a midi clip, we can now select all of these clips at once and if we look at detail view we can see that we now have all of these clips available to edit at the exact same time so now let's just flick across into session view and you can see we've got these clips I'm just gonna copy one more above and rename that to clip one I'm just gonna change the color of this so they're all different and then we can use the command shortcut to either select or deselect multiple clips and then we get these bars at the top of clip view which allow us to flick between these different clips and we can see the color change which represents the clip and we can also do this using the shift function, which lets us do a whole row or column vertically or horizontally. So with this multi-clip editing, we can do this with up to eight different MIDI clips at a time. And just to show you this, if we try and select a ninth, so I'll include this top one as well, and you can see we get this error message, so it's only for eight clips. So we've explained how we can select these clips, but now we need to explain how we can edit them. So as we can see here, we can use these bars, and then once we've selected a bar, we can then just paint in the notes as we normally would and the colour of the notes is going to correspond to the colour of the clip. So you see if I change this to brown, then the notes are now brown. And the other way that we can also add in notes is if we just click on the note that we want to change and it will show the colour of that note. So here we've got the light green or the yellow. We scroll down, we've got the other clips as well, so we just have to click the note and then we can start drawing in notes for that particular clip. We can also fold and unfold as well. If you see here, I've got a lot of the clips within the same octave range because I was trying out different bass ideas. So where this really comes into its own, if I just copy this clip across and colour it, so we now have a clip on two different tracks. And in this case, they're obviously playing the same thing, but if I just solo them both and play them both at the same time, you can see they're going to be sitting on top of each other. If I shift up this string track and I'm going to move it up an octave, then you can see we now have two different instruments and we can edit the MIDI for these two instruments at the exact same time. We can see them at the same time as well, where they sit on the keyboard and then therefore also where they sit in the frequency spectrum. So the thing I also really like about this is when we use it for things like drum tracks and percussion, because you can see we can edit the groove of these notes either by shortening the note length or by moving the actual notes manually to edit the groove, or we could also just add a groove preset across all of our clips at the same time. Something worth noting here is that we need to make sure we fire the clips at the same time if we want to do multi-clip editing. And the reason for that is because obviously we only have one playhead here, which is making its way across clip view. So if we launch them at different times, we get this error message here. So all we have to do is stop playback. And then once we stop playback, we can just start it again. So they're both fired off at the exact same time. They're going to be looping together. And that means that we can then edit them at the same time, as you can see here. So some other handy uses for multi-clip editing is things or some more advanced techniques, such as things like counterpoint or call and response patterns. So counterpoint is quite complicated music theory, but it's essentially where you create a bass line from some chords, or maybe you do the opposite and you create a set of chords using just the bass line. And having these both on the same screen can be really handy to see exactly what's going on. So you can extract your chord tones, use those as your bass, and then you can flick across back to your bass again, and you could start to add in some extra notes for those little passing notes and those little intricacies that make the bass interesting. We'll just add in a few 16th offbeat notes to our bass. So just to recap, the reason this is so good for music theory is because we've got the two clips overlaid on top of each other, say for example our melody and our bass, or our bass and our chords, then we can see the relationship and how they work together, not only in terms of rhythm and where they sit in the time domain, but also how they're going to harmonise with each other. So for example, we might have a major triad chord, and then with our bass line we might go an octave below, and we might strengthen that chord by using the root note of the scale below. Or on the contrary, we could use a weaker note which isn't or doesn't contain any of those chord tones, and we might go for something like the seventh note of the chord or the second note of the chord, and that's going to give a bit of a different sound. So it's really handy if you're into your music theory and you're really into your songwriting, then it's definitely something to look into because it is a really good way of working. So that's the more musical side of using the multi-clip editing, but then we can also use it in a more percussive or rhythmic sense as well. So here is a little bit of a call and response pattern between the rim shot and the clave. And what we can do is just look on the time domain and make sure that they're not going to be hitting at the exact same time.
So this just means that we can do this without having to use a drum rack, which would be the conventional way of doing it before Live 10. So now going into some tips on how to use multi-clip editing in arrangement view. Here I've got a piano, I've got a bass, and then I've got two different sets of strings. And what's really important is that you make sure that the instrument is true to its frequency spectrum. So make sure that the pitch is set so that if it's C3 on the keyboard, then it's actually hitting the right frequency. So sometimes if you're using the transpose tool, then you might be using C3 on the keyboard and it's actually a bass note and it's playing down in C1. So what you can do is you can use the pitch MIDI effect just to correct that. So if you have got any transposed settings on your devices, then it's still going to line up correctly on the keyboard. And the reason this is really handy for when you're arranging is it's going to allow you to do a complete arrangement in MIDI and make sure that at any one time you don't have too many instruments occupying the same space in the frequency spectrum because that's a recipe straight away for masking and having a really muddy mix which isn't going to sound very loud. If you're really careful about what you do and you use your space wisely within your mix then you can make sure that each element of your project has the limelight for a certain part of the arrangement and the only time you've got instruments on top of each other is if they're either in different areas of the frequency spectrum or in different octaves or if you're using the stereo field to your advantage so you have something in the middle of the mix and then maybe something out to the sides. So let's have a go at this arrangement technique now using this little section I've looped here. So I've just copied this piano melody down into the bass and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these chords because this is just a bass line and we don't need the chords so any duplicated notes can go. Now we can see the chords underneath that are greyed out. I'm just going to move the bass notes down into the bass range and then we can get rid of any of these duplicated notes that we have underneath here. So I can see I've got duplicated notes on each downbeat, they can go. And then we can move these ones up to fill in the gaps and see how it sounds. So I'm just going to move these bass notes up. I don't want the bass to be too melodic, I just want it to plod along and don't take the limelight away from our melody. Otherwise it's going to be clashing too much. But if we go on to our green bar now, which is our piano melody, we can see the interaction between the notes. So you can see we're supporting the downbeat there in green, which is a piano bass note. And then we have the rest of our bass melody, which plods along underneath that. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this section real quick because you've already seen the sort of thing that I'm doing. I'm just going to edit the groove slightly and maybe shuffle a few of these notes around and then we'll have a look at the lead melody and this bass lead on top of each other so we can see exactly what's going on. Okay, so I've now got this bass lead finished and sounding a little bit better and you can see I can just select this area in the arrangement now and we get the overlay with our multi-clip editing and we don't even have to consolidate our bass lead anymore. So all I've done is just duplicated that same little loop out until it matches that of the piano lead melody. And then from here what we could also do is we could apply a groove across all of this and we can also see the interplay between the notes. So as you can see, I've just shuffled a few notes around and I've moved a couple into the higher octave range as well. So let's keep the pace of this workflow up. So what I'm going to do now that I've made a lead bass from our piano melodies, I'm actually going to get rid of the piano melody now because we only needed it there so we could see the notes underneath and we could see how it was going to work and that we're not drifting too far away from our piano melody. So we'll get rid of that. We'll consolidate our bass lead, which is going to be for the chorus. And then what we can do is we can work on our breakdown again. So I've got this instrument, I've got some strings, and then I've got another set of strings here. So we'll help to build up this breakdown and then it's going to go into our bass lead. So I'm just going to drag these down. I'm then going to color these. We could either do that using the context menu or we could right click the actual track and assign track color to clips. So with all the clips selected, you can see we have our original green piano and we have the yellow strings, which I'll make legato. And then we have the pink strings, which I'm going to make legato, and I'm going to shift these up one octave so they're out of the same frequency spectrum. So now we only have the piano and these yellow strings that are competing for the same area of the frequency spectrum. So what we can do is we can go to our piano and we can rein the width in a little bit so it's slightly more mono or centered. And then we'll go to the yellow strings, and I'm just going to use these delay plugins which I've put on earlier, these racks, and that's just going to spread it slightly. So we're moving them out of each other's way so they sit a bit better. So here we have our strings. And then if I A, B, you can also hear our piano as well. So it's quite subtle. Now that we've processed these, what we can do is we can drag using the time in the arrangement. We can actually select 
all of this and we'll even include these crashes down the bottom as well because it's all MIDI clips and then what we can do is go to clip view and we can now see all of this in clip view and we can actually add in anything we want if we want to add a few more crashes or if we want to change the piano melody then we can all do this now exactly like we would as if we were doing it the arrangement view but now we have the ability to edit it all at the same time as well. That's the end of this video covering multi-clip editing in Ableton Live 10. So as you can see, it's got its uses in both session view and arrangement view, not only for being able to see the groove and the rhythm of your parts and being able to edit them, but also in terms of harmonization and being able to see the interplay between different parts of your melodies, chords and bass lines and how they're going to work together. I'll see you in the next video where we're going to be covering the new capture feature in Live 10.